Hi, my name is John Guerra. I am a singer songwriter and worship leader、uh, coming to you from Austin, Texas, right now. And happy Palm Sunday.、Um, what a strange, what a strange weekend.、Uh, we know where the story is going, but no one in the story knows where it's going except for Jesus. And I want to,、um, I, I just want to jump right in, if that's okay.、Uh, I want you first to、uh, close your eyes. And、um, I want to pray, God,、uh, would you help us、uh, engage with the reality、um, that the people at that time were engaging with?、Uh, they had their hopes dashed. They thought that、uh, this person, Jesus, was going to、uh, lead them away from the Roman Empire and into some kind of、um, physical uh, utopia. Um, And, and he confounded their expectations. Lord,、uh, you are still in the business of confounding our expectations. And for that, we say thank you.、Um, but right now, God, would you give us a sense of the ways that we need you to save us? Hosanna simply means save us, save us.、Um, we need you to save us, God. We need you to、uh, be more to us than even our own、um, greatest dreams and our own greatest expectations of our own safety. Can imagine. Greatest expectations of our own、um, uh, prosperity can imagine. We need you to be more. We need you to be、uh, who you are. We need you to be Jesus. So now, as we sing Hosanna, God, would you、uh, bring to mind、um, just the ways that we are bringing our own expectations to you? And as we sing,、um, help us leave those、uh, at your feet now. Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the high. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Everyone thought was going to be some、uh, political leader ended up being、um, someone who talked a lot about this thing called the kingdom of God, where the last are first, and when, where the poor are actually rich, where those who mourn will be comforted.、Uh, this is a very transgressive、um, message, even today.、Uh, the kingdom of God is not something that can be found in the halls of political power, it's not something that can be found in,、uh, in, in, the, in, in any Kind of king's courts. It's, it's a kingdom that can be found、um, within you, within me, and, and between us as we are、um, the embodied,、uh, well, as we are the body of Christ together in the world, in this broken world. So as we sing, Blessed are the poor, we're saying, really, God, may your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven.、Um, And that's who, that's who this Hosanna, that's who this king really was, someone who brought that kingdom. So let's sing that again. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the poor 
who have nothing to own. Blessed are the mourners who are crying alone. Blessed are the guilty who have nowhere to go, for their hearts have a road to the kingdom of God. And their souls are the songs of the kingdom of God, and they will find a refuge for theirs is the kingdom of God. Sing Hosanna. 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 Is so interesting um, for its details. Uh, Jesus comes in to Jerusalem, and they wave palm branches. Um, he comes in on a on a donkey. He doesn't come in on a on a war horse. And uh, we know where the story leads, don't we? We know it, it leads to ultimately Calvary. It leads to the cross. It leads to something that, in the world's eyes, is utter foolishness, um, but in God's eyes, is utter triumph. And, um, you know, what are the things, I guess my question for you is, what are the things in your life that, that you have found to be utter foolishness? Um, what are endeavors that you found yourself in that you thought, I can't believe I was such a fool to give myself to this thing? Um, maybe it's something as small as a, as a spiritual discipline. Uh, maybe it's something as small as, um, you know, building your life around a career that, that has maybe disappointed you. Maybe it's something that, uh, maybe it's your family. Maybe it's something you're, you're even afraid to admit. Um, our lives and our families are made up of a, of a lot of small moments that sometimes can feel very triumphant and sometimes can feel very defeating. Um, I, I know, I, at least for me with my little baby girl, it, it can be both at the same time, can it? Um, the beautiful thing about the cross is that um, the cross is not only the redemption of the death and defeat of Jesus, the cross is the promise and the hope of redemption of all of our defeats and of all of our deaths. And um, this next song uh, is called Jerusalem and I actually just discovered it a few uh, weeks ago, but it's, it's very beautiful and um, I would like to sing it with you and for you now. Um, 
goes like this. See him in Jerusalem Walking where the crowds are Once these streets had sung to him Now they cry for murder Such a frail and lonely It's an amazing thing to think that even our defeats and our uh, deaths and our um, sin and our frailty and ultimately our own, uh, our own natural bent towards uh, going the wrong way and preferring the wrong things, um, those things are all really just clay in the hands of God to create something that is so surprising and so, it's so beyond what we could even hope to um, imagine th- that it, it would startle us. We, we, we don't have the faith yet to believe what God has in store f- for us because of Jesus, because of where this story is going. And, um, you know, it, it, I, I find that it's, it, the degree to which we're unable to see and believe um, 
the goodness that God has for us, the degree to which we're unable to um, really have faith to believe God uh, is, is more kind to us than we can imagine, is the same degree that we're also unable to um, believe the best in our enemies. Uh, the degree to which we're uncharitable with our own futures is the degree to which we're uncharitable with um, the futures really of others. Uh, to believe the best in our enemy is, is really the other side of a coin that is to say, I am, I am like my enemy. I am, uh, I am the one who drives the nails into Jesus' hands. Um, the degree to which you see yourself as a sojourner in this world, on this earth, is the degree to which you will have compassion on the sojourner, those who really are strangers in your community, uh, in your church, in, in your schools, in your places of work. Um, what, what a crazy time to be in this country, my goodness. I talk about being unable to imagine what tomorrow is gonna bring. It's been a year of unimaginable sorrow and, um, and horror, really, and group uh, societal trauma. Uh, my wife is a therapist, a trauma therapist, and we talk about trauma a lot. And um, I have a song that I wanna sing for you now. It's gonna be my last song. It's, it's called Citizens, and it's a song basically about seeing ourselves in our most prized identity, which is we are um, sojourners whom God has welcomed not only welcomed as strangers, not only welcomed as citizens, but he's welcomed us as family. And, and that framework, that rubric, stranger to citizen to family, um, I believe is really, uh, uh, is really a model for how we ought to engage with the world. Um, he's called us friends, and so, so, so there's room. Our hearts are big enough to call our enemies, to, to love our enemies, and, and to um, hopefully maybe one day even call them family. Um, and that's kind of what this song is about. It's, it, it's thinking through, boy, what would justice look, look like if I saw it here in this world? Uh, in, in God's world, there's one law, and it's the law of love. And, and what would it look like if we were all judged by that law? Um, it's called Citizens, and uh, I'm gonna sing it for you now. I have a heart full of questions, quieting all my suggestions. What is the meaning of Christian in this American life? I'm feeling awfully foolish, spending my life on a message. I look around and I wonder ever if I heard it right. I'm coming to you cause I'm confused. I'm coming to you cause I feel used, coming to weep. While I'm waiting, tell me you won't make me go I need to know there is justice That it will roll in abundance And that you're building a city Where we arrive as immigrants And you call us citizens And you welcome us as children home You were alone and rejected Misunderstood and detested You gave it all, didn't hold back You even gave up your life How can we call ourselves Christians Saying that love is a tension Between the call of the cross And between the old party line Coming to you for the mothers Who are all running for cover There is a flood from their weeping Tell me you won't make them go I need to know there is justice That it will roll in abundance And that you're building a city Where we arrive as immigrants And you call us citizens And you welcome us as children home There is a man with a family He has a wife and a baby He broke the law just to save them Working for three bucks an hour 
Truly you said we were equal Everyone's heart is deceitful Everyone born is illegal When love is the law of the land I'm coming to you for the hungry Eating the scraps of this country Didn't you swear you'd feed them? Tell me you won't make them go I need to know there is justice That it will roll in abundance And that you're building a city Where we arrive as immigrants And you call us citizens And you welcome us as children home There's a wolf who is ranting And all of the sheep, they are clapping Promising power and protection Claiming the Christ who was killed Killed by a common consensus Everyone screaming Barabbas Trading their God for a hero Forfeiting heaven for Rome I'm coming to you cause I'm angry I'm coming to you cause I'm guilty I'm coming to you cause you promised to leave the flock for the one I need to know there is justice that it will roll in abundance and that you're building a city where we arrive as immigrants and you call us citizens and you welcome us as children home where we arrive as immigrants and you call us citizens and you welcome us as children home Is there a way to love always, living in enemy hallways? I don't know my foes from my friends. I don't know my friends anymore. Power has several prizes. Handcuffs can come in all sizes. Love has a million disguises. But winning is simply not one. God, would you teach us to prize the only thing that is of value, which is the love that you've placed inside of us, our identity that cannot be taken away from us as your sons and daughters. Would that prize, would that treasure inside of us flow out like rivers of living water to a thirsty world? May we not contribute to the desert of discourse in our society. May we not contribute to um, the breakdown of uh, the common good. May we uh, be an embassy of heaven sowing peace, sowing mercy. Give us joy in the going and in the coming. Give us uh, patience with ourselves, with our world, and with those that we love. And would you come quickly, Lord? In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, Roots family. Good morning. It's Palm Sunday, and it's also a Journey Group Sunday. I'm so excited to be joining you via video, and we have some exciting announcements for this Holy Week. First, Pastor Oshin and I are going to be hosting a Monday, Thursday morning Moravian devotions over Zoom. We're going to post it in the Facebook community group, and it's going to be at 7 a.m. Join us for that. It's going to be great. Then, on Good Friday at 7 p.m., we're going to gather for a contemplative worship gathering in the community room at the Prior Works building. We're going to have self-guided prayer through original graffiti Stations of the Cross that I painted, along with the performance of an original song written by our own Renee Spillum. You're going to want to be there. That's at 7 p.m. Good Friday. Then, on Holy Saturday, Pastor Oshida has two online events that she's hosting. One for Evolving Faith, a morning Easter Eve chapel, 
and a holy Saturday evening vigil. Links will be in the weekly. Then of course, Easter Sunday. You're all invited to join the Moors as we drive out to Chaska to join Chaska Moravian Church for an, a Moravian Easter sunrise service at 6.30. And then of course, you're all invited to join other misfits for our worship gathering at SPNN at 10 o'clock. Pastor Rashida is gonna be preaching because the women preached the resurrection and we're gonna be joined by Cabin of Love to help us with our musical worship. Join us for all these wonderful Holy Week services. Now, as you all know, I have a day job and my office at work is on the same floor as a drop-in center where we serve 60 to 80 youth experiencing various stages and types of homelessness per day. Sometimes there's conflict in the space and my coworker David and I can hear the conflict from our offices. And so we rush into the space and try to make sure and keep everyone safe. One time we heard a really loud scream. So of course we rushed into the space to see what had happened, but we couldn't find anyone who was hurt and we couldn't find where the scream had come from. Then a young person who's basically an intern on staff opened up a door to the stairwell and began apologizing. He said, Sorry, I'm just going through a lot, and I thought the stairwell was more soundproof than that. We, of course, were so relieved that nobody was hurt, but we were also a little concerned about the intern. <laughs> Have you ever reached a point like that where you just felt like you had to scream out loud? I know I have. And it makes me think of uh, a man that has had a lot of influence on me uh, named Jonathan Martin. Um, he comes from a Pentecostal background, but like me, uh, he's had his faith expanded by the global and diverse body of Christ, and he's journeyed out of fundamentalism. I encountered his ministry back when he was planting a church in Charlotte called Renovatus. And it was around the same time that he released his first book called Prototype. Really good book, highly recommend it if you get a chance to read it. But you're going to love this. The tagline of his church plant, Renovatus, was a church for misfits and dreamers, right? Perfect. And one of the things that has always stuck out to me all these years since he planted that church was part of the church website that said, we will embrace the liturgy and the shout. <laughs> we incite worship that engages both intellect and emotion, believing that the head and the heart are to be integrated and not divorced. This week, as I was reflecting upon our gospel reading for this Palm Sunday, where Jesus says, if the crowd were silent, the very stones would cry out. I was remembering that line from the church website, Renovatus, about the liturgy and the shout. And it sent me tumbling down a really strange rabbit hole. I discovered that back in 1970, a psychologist named Arthur Yanoff wrote a book called The Primal Scream. This is part of what it says on the cover of that book. Some years ago, I heard something that was to change the course of my professional life and the lives of my patients. What I heard may change the nature of psychology as it is now known. An eerie scream welling up from the depths of a young man lying on the floor during a therapy session. Dr. Yanoff's book claims that this experience initiated years of research that he believes unlocked something about the connection between a person's childhood traumas and the neuroses that his patients were experiencing in their adulthood. Now, I'm not telling you to go and get scream therapy, but I'm not not telling you to go and get scream therapy. Consult your doctor. <laughs> but what has struck me about this as I was looking into all of this is that both in the realm of psychology and in the realm of Christian community, there's this acknowledgement of a cry that wells up from the deepest parts of who we are. And that thought resonates with me and I think it's pictured in a very powerful way in our Palm Sunday gospel text for this morning. So that's why this morning I want to explore this cry, the cry that comes 
from the deepest parts of us. But before we dive into our text, let's pray for the Spirit's work of illumination. (sighs) Spirit of the living God, Scripture says that when we don't even know how to pray or what to pray, you step in and you pray for us with groans that cannot be uttered. Scripture says that God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts by whom we cry, Abba, Father. So would you open our hearts this morning to receive that Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus? Would you open our minds to receive the wisdom that you would have impart to us this morning? And may the Word be like a seed that finds good soil. May it take up root and bear fruit, good fruit, fruit that will last. May the words of my lips, meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, my rock, and my redeemer. And all God's people said, Amen. Well, our gospel text for this Palm Sunday comes from Luke chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. If you have your own translation of the Bible, uh, you are welcome to turn in it. I'm going to go ahead and read from the NIV, and you can follow along with me if you'd like. And when Jesus had said these things, He went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethpage, yeah, I'm going to say Bethphage, and Bethany, at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering it you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it, bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say this, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent away and found it just as they had been told. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road, As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, If these were silent, the very stones would cry out. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of this passage. This is, of course, the episode in Jesus' life that is traditionally referred to as the triumphal entry. But as we saw a couple of weeks ago, when Jesus is entering into this city that is notorious for turning prophets into martyrs, Jesus weeps over Jerusalem. Jesus longs to draw the children of Jerusalem to himself like a mother hen. If you missed that message from a couple weeks ago, you could still hear it. It's up on the website or in the podcast feed. It was really only a triumphal entry from the perspective of the crowds. To them, this was the beginning of the end of their occupation by the Romans. The crowds that welcomed Jesus that first Palm Sunday were convinced that he was the long-awaited Messiah, the king who, would, who was sent by God to liberate them from Roman oppression. This was the concrete, real-world reality that they faced. They weren't crying out to him and calling him king because they felt bad about their sins and they wanted Jesus to forgive them and make them feel less guilty. They weren't crying out to Jesus and calling him king because they were afraid of a fiery place called hell where they'd be tortured forever, but instead they wanted to go to a cloudy place called heaven, where they would get harps and wings. No, that was not what the triumphal entry was all about. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem that first Palm Sunday, the crowds that day thought that he was coming to take on the Romans, to fight for their freedom, and by the power of God, to win. But Jesus doesn't take up a throne in Jerusalem. He takes up a cross instead. Jesus doesn't take up swords in Jerusalem. Instead, he disarms Peter, who's just trying to defend him. 
Jesus doesn't amass an army and storm Pilate's palace. Instead, he stands before Pilate vulnerable and innocent, knowing that he will still be condemned. It's not difficult to understand how the same crowd that praised him with palm branches turns into the, the crowd that calls for his crucifixion. I mean, I see this all the time. These days when everyone's constantly posting all their thoughts online every day, I see it at least once a week. It's really, really easy to become disillusioned with God. And we have expectations on how God should behave and should show up. And according to our expectations, God fails. It's really, really easy to grow bitter and resentful towards God when God doesn't show up how and when we want God to. You can fill in the blanks. Where was God when? Palm Sunday begins a journey with Jesus that you and I are invited into. It's not a one and done journey like, come on TC, I already know the story. Jesus goes to Jerusalem, he flips over a few tables, he prays in a garden, gets arrested, gets crucified, and then boom, rises again. No. Knowing the story isn't the same as entering into the story. To enter into the story, we have to place ourselves among that crowd. We have to tap into that deep cry at the center of who we are that longs desperately for liberation. We have to see ourselves placing all of our hopes on Jesus and then being dejected by his arrest, his trial, his refusal to even defend himself and fight back. What kind of Messiah is this? We have to walk with Jesus through the emotional toll of Holy Week. Jesus, knowing that he will be handed over to the powers that be, has a last meal with his disciples in which he tells them that he's going to be killed. And even though he himself is struggling with this heavy burden, he washes their feet. We have to walk with Jesus into the garden where he's in anguish over this unimaginable task. He pleads with the Father, may this cup pass from me. And he sweats drops of blood. We have to walk with Jesus through the trial, the mockery, the false accusations. Leaders of Israel conspiring with Rome to have Jesus executed. We have to walk with Jesus through the betrayal of Judas, one of his closest friends, a companion who walked with him, saw the signs and wonders, heard his teaching, and then turned him over to be executed. As we begin this Holy Week journey, we're invited to enter into this story and to allow it to get in on the inside of us, to form us, to, to draw us closer to the divine, healing parts of ourselves that we've walled off from God. We're invited to get in touch with that cry that's deep within our hearts. Where was God when? Of course, Holy Week shows us that God was in Jesus. God was right there in the flesh, weeping over us because we wouldn't come to him. God was in Jesus, furious at the money changers for their corruption. God was in Jesus, washing our feet, asking us to stay awake and pray with him while he languished over this mission. God was in Jesus being falsely accused, beaten and mocked, crucified on a cross and buried in a tomb. God was in Jesus experiencing the full weight of what it means to be human. God was in Jesus taking upon himself all the scorn, all the rage, all the lies that this world could hurl at him. God was in Jesus showing us what it looks like to be faithful in the face of pain. God was in Jesus, showing us the depths to which God was willing to go to demonstrate God's love. 
at the beginning of this Holy Week journey, we find ourselves among that crowd, heaping praise upon Jesus for being who we want him to be. But all the while, Jesus knows that we're going to turn on him. We're invited to examine the ways in which we often want God to meet our expectations rather than surrendering ourselves to God's will, knowing that God's will is what we would want for ourselves if we knew all that God knows. We're invited to submit the deepest cry of our hearts to God. Not the polished religious cry that we shout from the safety of the crowd, but the cry of our hearts when we're alone and exhausted and we feel hopeless. We're invited to expose our vulnerability to God to identify with the vulnerability of Jesus and to see in his passion the love of God that can hold the deepest cries of our hearts. Beloved, these past few years, I've had a bunch of these moments. I've gotten alone with God and cried out, where are you, God? Are you even listening? Do you even care? I feel all alone and overwhelmed. I'm not ashamed to admit that I have these moments with God because I know that faith isn't the same as certainty. Faith is trust. And trust isn't some one and done sort of thing. Trust, I trust in God, and yet sometimes I don't understand what's going on. I'm confused and I feel lost. I know that disciples wrestle with God. And I know that God can hold the deepest cries of my heart. When Jesus says that if his disciples don't cry out, the stones themselves will cry out. Of course, that's hyperbole. And yet, it also points to something deeper. There's a telos, which means end or goal, towards which all of creation is moving. The source and the ground of all that exists beckons creation closer and closer to God's self. And creation itself is longing, groaning to be remade. And the creator's dream for creation is wholeness, harmony, mutuality, reciprocity. That's where creation's heading. And until that day, our hearts, like creation itself, cry out. As the image of God, we've been called to be stewards of the creation, to represent God's loving reign, on the earth, on God's behalf, and to gather up the praises of creation and the groaning of creation and give it to God. That's what we're doing when we sing, when we lament. That's what we're doing when we make music. We're taking the material world, the the wood and the string, the metal and the plastic, and we're, we're using the air and the sound waves, and we're turning those physical materials into music that gives meaning to the cries of our heart. This Holy Week, as we enter into the story of Jesus' passion, we're invited to let that story get on the inside of us. We're invited to see God in Jesus, touched by the feelings of our infirmities. And we're invited to wrestle with God and with our expectations of God. And we're invited to entrust into God's hands the deepest cries of our hearts. Amen.